I am back with some more tea on it, Nikki and Ice. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into all of the tea, please make sure that you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in female rappers and what they be got going on over there. That actually, that makes no sense what I just said. But yeah, so like since Nikki released the FTCU sleaze mix, which is, this is the thumbnail for the video that I made about it, my take on it. So go uh, see that if you didn't already. So since she released that, um, we talked about some behind the scenes tea for the remix and stuff she had to say about every artist but meanwhile Nikki has been on station head two times in one day on Saturday April um 20th she has been saying things that I could attribute to her relationship with Ice Spice, and this is what we're going to focus on on this video. I was initially going to make a video about what she had to say about JT and Ice, because she has a lot to say about both of them, but it was too much, so I had to split it. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So Nikki starts off, um, she says, um, and she didn't necessarily start the show on this note because by this time she was talking about JT in the first show that I'm going to talk about. So she's like, it's so many people I gave the best advice to. But remember, JT, we used to speak about this a long time ago. So many new artists I... I gave the best advice to people will never give this type of advice, but because they're so filled in their head with these delusions and the people around them can contribute to these delusions. And so Nikki was basically saying like, don't compare the likes that you get on social media to like album sales and thinking that you're getting a lot of likes that equate to al album sales is basically not good. Um, so yeah, she said, um, you know, basically, I'd always tell new artists the same thing that she told Ice allegedly. Remember, all things are alleged. Um, but she says, because they were so effed in the head with these delusions, once Cloud9 comes down, you realize who's in this industry, like who's who and what's what. You have a long effing way to go. If um, if you think viral content and you being on blogs is really going to get you somewhere, think again. She said people was really believing. Um, it's certain people that didn't believe it when I said it, that, you know, it would all all come crashing down but they believe it now so it's crazy because when she was um talking about uh, this stuff the first time it was three o'clock in the morning three four o'clock in the morning and y'all like I was half asleep so I would in my head first I was thinking about Koi and honestly that's kind of like the one of the main things in this whole thing is that what Nikki is saying about Ice could really be attributed to Coyle Ray as well, as well as Megan Thee Stallion. And I'm not saying that she is talking about them, but what I am saying is that it's very reminiscent of the same conversations that Nikki was telling us about when she decided to open up about what really happened between her, Megan Thee Stallion, Coyle Ray. They're all users, you know, stuff like that. So now... Um, we're going to transition into the sh second show that basically happened on the same day, 420, because she's had a more to say about Ice, more similar things, but some different. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as always, bear with me because y'all know I'm reading from my notes. So Nikki starts off this show saying, you know, what's funny is when you're a great effing human, but the universe will block certain people and things. There's nothing better than watching someone who attempted to shit on you looking dumb AF. It's interesting how many people... Um, how many people, when they feel they get, they're getting a little attention, how they treat you, um, because they don't understand the business. They make decisions that would cost them forever. If I were to tell the barbs the shit that someone, that's that, um, some like, if I were to tell the bars basically what these people have tried to, you know, do with me behind the scenes or whatever, like the bars would really be mad. Um, my point, she, Nikki says, my point is that they always end up getting gagged. We've seen it, whether it's taking shots at people who gave them shots, taking shots at people who genuinely tried to help them or taking shots at protecting them from stuff that they didn't even know they needed to be protected from. Now, of course, everything I'm telling you right now, I think could be attributed to ice, but Nikki is saying right here, my, um, she says like, We've seen this time and time again. She's telling the barbs, like, we've seen this time and time again with all these different girls making coy, whatever, right? Um, she said, if the barbs only knew, could you imagine all them um shots thrown? And then you realize I might have spoke too soon, might have moved too fast. The barbs are stronger than I thought. So basically, what she's saying is that like somebody like Ice who think they had the barbs on lock, you thought that you was so hot and all of that stuff that you couldn't, you know, like the, the barbs would never get off of you. But 
is very easy, you know, because I she's well liked. She had a, a lot of things clouding her head, and that's basically what Nikki is telling us. She seems like this humble person, but the way that she was treating Nikki, acting with Nikki, and not wanting to, you know, further their business relationship was giving that old oh, like I don't need you because I'm already it. You can't be me. I'm already it. That's what Ice was trying to tell her. Um. Anyway. So then she says, y'all got managers and a and a and R is hyping y'all up, basically talking to artists as well. Um, if y'all only knew how many people did the same pattern and were linked to the same person, so now she's alleging that like how many people, how many people effed her over, but they're linked to the same person. So every time now we talk about this I situation and even Lotto a little bit, we allege that um they're both signed to Nikki's old management G Roberson and their company Blueprint. Um, and so she's saying that they're all tied to the same person. Very interesting. So um she says people take your kindness for weakness and basically when she said they're all signed to the same person it was a plan orchestrated and it goes real real deep so basically she's saying it's a real deep vendetta that they have against her taking my kindness for weakness thinking you have it all figured out when you got these people in your ears who be going to be on to the next basically she's saying like ice you got managers because the alleged thing between nikki and ice is that oh like it's not nikki it's it's um or it's not Nikki versus Ice, it's Nikki versus Ice's management. And Nikki's basically, she finally makes it clear that no, you got your manager over there pumping your head up thinking that you don't need me or if it's not advantageous to work with me. But little do you know, here y'all are now struggling to keep people's attention. And then I, after they done managing you because you got too, um, you know, cold or whatever, your career not doing anything, they going to move on to the next. That's what Nikki's saying is that you think you the is be, <laughs> you ain't even the fart. Duh. When you go down, your managers is going to leave you and go to the next hot artist. So Nikki continues and said, my point is that when you get into a situation, um, like this in life as effed up it might feel like what is happening i've never not looked back and thanked god for keeping me away from certain things and certain people so basically she is thanking god for um keeping her away from basically fake people or whatever blood sucker she calls them she says no last thing um no matter how much um lipstick you put on a pig is still a pig the barbs would literally be mad at me if they knew the things that i did um, didn't make them aware of, but in due time. So basically in due time, she's going to tell us, don't ever be mad when a person's motives are revealed. Just thank God that they were revealed. My fan base is a hot commodity. Prior to this album and tour, people were hyped up enough to disrespect me behind, um, sorry, but to, to disrespect me behind some behind the scenes and some not behind the scenes. So she's alluded to people disrespecting the tour blogs talking about the talk, the tour wasn't selling. Um, she said, but regardless, just remember me saying this, the day that I decide to share it, what she decides to share in terms of what she, the, the tea that she decides to share the day I decide to share it, the bar is going to be mad. I ain't share it sooner. And she said, you know, what be funny rather. Um, she said, basically Nikki was saying is that I just rather people keep it all the way real. Yo, you don't like me. You just want to work with me. You just want the clout. You just want the money. I'd rather you be upfront with me than to use me and then, you know, come around me and try to, you know, whatever. So yeah, that's basically what Nikki had to say on ice. This is going to be added to the Nikki versus ice playlist on the channel. What's important to remember here is that Nikki finally makes a distinction that her issues with ice's camp is not just her management. It's going to come to a time where if Ice cannot override her management as the boss she claims to be, it's going to be turned into a personal issue between her and Nikki. And that's basically what Nikki is alluding to right now. I'm not saying that they have a personal issue um, or relationship or whatever, but yeah, so I'm excited to keep talking about this. Of course, um, once again, um, please like this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is she really talking about Ice or somebody else? And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And we're going to talk about everything that Nikki had to say about JT. Thank you guys so much.